In this first video, we're going to cover the basics of Inspire, let you learn a little bit about the interface, uh, talk about bringing in some geometry, uh, and altering the view, changing things around. So we'll kind of go through the basics, and then we'll move on from there. So Inspire is set up uh, using the, the ribbon-based structure. So along here and along the top, we've got uh, our, our general topics. So geometry, you can see I'm in geometry, uh, the little yellow line underneath it. And that's going to open up all of this functionality that deals uh, specifically with, uh, with geometry. So our development, our creation of geometry within Inspire, and we'll have a video on how to go about doing that, to geometry manipulation. The next one over, we of course have structure. Structure is where we're going to have all of the tools that are necessary to set up an analysis or an optimization. Motion, and we'll have a video on uh, motion later on, but motion is where we can set up our multi-body dynamics analysis in, uh, in Inspire. And then even take that and drive an analysis or an optimization directly from the motion analysis. Uh, manufacture is where we have uh, some of our manufacturing tools. Uh, print 3D is where we can then take our designs and get them set up for a 3D printer. So the first thing I want to do here is, uh, and this is something that I like to do with Inspire, uh, is I come here to view and I'm going to select a model browser and property editor. You'll also notice that uh, we've got F2 and F3 here. We could just uh, turn those on as, as well by clicking the F2 or F3 key. And then down here, we also have a Python window, uh, which will open up a Python interface. But the model browser and the property editor, I find particularly useful. Yes, you compromise or you lose a little bit of your uh, your design window here. But the information that's inside these, uh, these windows, I think more than makes up for that. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna open up a, a model. And I can do that by coming from the file pull down, or I can use our multifunction files icon here where I can open a model, create a new model, or if I had a model open, save a model. So I'm gonna click open a model, and I'm just gonna open up this model here, this exercise four. So now that I have this model in here, it's going to populate all of the different uh, parts into my model browser here. Uh, Inspire, this was an Inspire model, but Inspire does support the opening. Uh, we don't even consider it importing in Inspire. We just open up uh, all of these different geometry files in their native format. So all the popular uh, CAD packages out there, as well as the standard third-party formats, uh, the intermediate formats, Step, Parasolid, and, and IGES. So no matter what format you have your geometry in, we can get it into Inspire. And when we bring in geometry into Inspire, uh, it will maintain all of the assembly and naming st uh, structures that you set for your geometry in your CAD package. Uh, so we try to make this as a, a software that, that partners with CAD. Uh, do, your, uh, do your geometry creation in CAD, and then when, it times to, when it's time to become serious about doing analysis or optimization, bring it into Inspire, and, uh, and we'll work from there. So uh, if I select any of these, I get some more information down there and highlights on the screen and I get more information down here about the uh, about that particular part. Uh, it lets me know the material that it's made out of and you see steel AISI 304. Everything in here will be made out of that material. That is the default material. And we'll have another uh, in our structure, men, uh, our stru Inspire structure video, we'll have in information as to how to go about uh, changing that and uh, creating new materials. Uh, but in general, if I come down here, I can I can select there, or I can select from within the graphics window, and uh, you see it highlights here as well. I can turn things on or off with uh, the model browser here. But as we get more and more parts in our model, that that potentially can become a little uh, a little difficult to kind of isolate which one I want. So this little eyeball down here that uh, that will help us uh, when I select that. It, uh, the, my pointer gets this little black star modifier on it and anything that I left click on will go faded until I right click to leave the function and it disappears entirely. Uh, it's just hidden. It's no different than had I uh, selected it from up there, but it's a way to do it graphically in the window. And if I wanna bring something back, I just come back here, select the I again. And if I hold my shift key down, you'll see that uh, now I get a little uh, white star modifier and the things that are hidden 
I can turn them back on. Now, one of the first things people want to know about how to uh, work with Inspire is how to manipulate your model, how to pan, zoom, and rotate. So the standard way of doing that within Inspire, if I hold my middle mouse button, my scroll wheel down, I can do a rotate. And anywhere that I click here, sorry, let me, there we go. With my right mouse button, will become the new there we go, center of rotation. So as I move around here, that becomes the new center of rotation. To pan my model, I just hold the right mouse button down. And to zoom in and out, I can use my scroll wheel. Now I know that you may be familiar with the mouse uh, manipulation uh, structure in some CAD system or other software that you may use. To make things as easy as possible for you, we just come up here to File, Preferences, and if I come to Mouse Controls, you'll see right now it's set for the uh, default Inspire, and I can change these to whatever I want them to be, including modifiers. But you'll see if I come here and I select the presets, uh, all of the different popular CAD packages are there, and if I select one of them, uh, the buttons now get this default settings for SolidWorks, in this case, or Katia or whatever I want it to be, and now the the mouse will act just as it does in your uh, your favorite CAD package. Make the uh, transition from CAD into Inspire a, a, a little more a uh, little more transparent. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about the functions within Inspire, not necessarily how to use them. We'll get into those, but just understand that the functions within Inspire, many of them uh, utilize what we call multi-function uh, capabilities. So a multi-function icon. Uh, if I look at rectangles, for instance, here. If I come up to the rectangle, I don't just click this icon and get a rectangles function. I actually select one of the different options within the rectangles, and it will give me a different type of rectangle generation. Another one that has a number of different features on it is my uh, loads. If I come here to loads, I can create supports, I can create forces, I can create pressures. I can create torques. So depending upon where I select on the icon, I get a, a different function. Uh, so that's it for this first video, just kind of a, a brief introduction into Inspire. Uh, we'll move on from here and start talking about uh, some more advanced features like uh, doing structural analysis, optimization, modal analysis, uh, all sorts of really cool things that you can do with Inspire. So take a look at my other videos and uh, we'll get you, uh, get you all the information you need to get your models designed, optimized, and analyzed within Altair Inspire.